Hello again, everyone. For those who already joined, feel free to say hello in a minute. We will begin the webinar. Okay, so let's begin. So welcome everyone to the third edition of our PayGups webinars. If you're seeing my face for the third time behind the bled background, then congratulations, you've made it to the third edition. Oh, we're happy to have you here. My name is Jacqueline from the Customer Success team, and I'm happy to be your host once again. For those who don't know about our organization, well, since 2014, where we were, you know, um, once a distributor, now we're turned a software provider, and we've been working tirelessly, um, you know, to bring to technology solutions, uh, you know, to help scale up access to essential products and services in the last mile, especially in low income regions. And our aim, of course, has always been to, you know, enable technology for the value chain, right from supporting manufacturers to improve upon product design, all the way, you know, to allowing interoperability of Paygo solution. Um, that's with our software, of course, and open Paygo. And of course, as well, we also provide a suite of operational tools and apps for LMDs through our flagship product, um, PayGops not forgetting our product development services branch uh, called Solaris Lab. Um, and as you know, from the vast experience that we might have working with LMDs, we've always tried to, you know, merge challenges with solutions, uh, whether it's with our main software um, solution or whether it's with hardware propositions. But alongside, we have um, advanced services that we offer as well. One of which, of course, is the custom workflows uh, that we offer in terms of consultation services. And in this webinar, we will be showcasing um, by a couple of scenarios and as well a demo, um, how you can automate your in-house processes uh, to increase, of course, your business efficiency and to facilitate scaling up um, your operations at the last mile. Um, so what I you know, it's recurrent processes in your company you're looking to, you know, like um, simplify your complex processes. Hopefully this webinar will address those concerns that you have. So hang on while I introduce you to a uh, speaker of the day who's going to do us the honors of, you know, answering those questions that you might have about improving upon operational efficiency. And our speaker of course is in person of a uh, software solution specialist. Simon Shefna on screen. Um, so welcome again, all attendees. We're really happy to have you here and we look forward to your participation throughout the webinar. Feel free, of course, like I said at the beginning to connect in the chat. If you have any concerns, drop it in the chat. But more importantly, if you have any questions, we have a dedicated Q&A box um, also next to the chat where you can drop all your questions and we'll be sure to answer them at the end of the presentation. So thank you once again. Before I hand over to Simon, I will invite all of you to take just 30 seconds out of your time to answer a poll that we have. We're just interested in knowing what your role is in the ecosystem or what you do in your organization. All right, thanks very much. And I invite our speaker, Simon, to take it from here. Simon. Thank you very much, Jacqueline. Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining today's session. Um, so yeah, I'm uh, Simon Schaffner. I'm Software Solutions Specialist in TechOps, and I'm going to give you an overview of what we can do as uh, well, with custom workflows and as consulting uh, services. So before we even start going into what this is about. I just want to wrap up on what are usually the process of last mile distributors and how all these boxes interact with each other. 
So this is an example, of course. Which Sorry, Sue Mo, it appears as if uh, we can't hear you properly. Um, but it's like an average um, that can be used. But then in addition to this, you have that do delivery and then the clients ultimately. The right side you have, uh, sorry, hope it gets better. I don't really know. Um, yeah, you might, okay. I think you're back now, but you might have to start from the top because we didn't hear you quite well. Okay. Yes. Sorry. All right, so um, yeah, so what this slide is about is like an introduction to typical that my last my distributors processes and how each of these boxes interact with each other, uh, which might or might not match with your own organization, but uh, it's like a prerequisite to understand the, the rest of what I'm gonna uh, emphasize. So you have on the left your clients in the field that you want to service you have field agents interacting interacting directly with these clients and then what big ups can do for you is the collection of payments the sales the management of after sales management of your inventory uh, and then on the right you have more office work meaning accounting which needs to take into account both uh, your receivable and your sales from uh, pay ups but also your internal stuff um, inventory, procurement of, of uh, inventory products, and generally how your office staff in, um, interacts with all that. Okay, so uh, the, the idea of this slide is just to show how many moving parts there are in typical organizations and how all this interacts. Because this is typically what we need to, uh, what we can improve to uh, improve your, your costs and your expense and your processes. So in uh, the rest of the presentation, I'm going to use uh, an example of Last Mile Distributor uh, that we've used in some of our uh, marketing documentation before, I believe. So that's like just a very, very rough example of a company with, for example, 10 employees, 100 or well, 10 office employees, 100 field agents, 1,000 new prospects per week, and then an average uh, more or less accurate uh, wage for calculation of how much uh, work effort basically costs you. So the example we've put in the bottom is here, if a task takes one minute per field agent for every new lead every week, that you can multiply all these numbers and you would get to a total cost of $800 per, per week uh, for the totality of your organization or just like one one minute task. Okay, so I'm going to use uh, similar approximations for um, other examples I'll be giving uh, throughout this, uh, this presentation. Okay, so I'm going to come back to, to this uh, uh, hypothetical company. So as I mentioned before, what we can offer you is automating uh, your processes, like automating the connections between all these moving parts uh, that we've been uh, seeing on the, on the previous slide. So that this is exactly what our team does. So uh, our team is like IT consulting projects for PayGups clients. So where we can leverage our own field experience. So we've worked in the field before, our expertise of PayGups and the close relationship with our software development team. and uh, ideally to put that together with like software architecture, integrations, and connect all our skills, our knowledge with your own processes to try to, uh, to leverage PayGaps functionalities um, in order to optimize your processes and your costs eventually. Okay, so that's what we do. So in the rest of the presentation, I'm gonna go through a few examples that are representative of what we can do for you. So I have to start with a quick introduction of PayGaps API. So application programming interface, which is basically the foundation 
that we use for any automation or uh, custom workflow that we can implement for you. And then I'll go through a few common process uh, automations. Uh, then I'll give a little bit in-depth demo of an example of a credit scoring solution. And then a shorter overviews of what we've worked before in terms of inventory management integration or accounting management integration. Okay, so before I jump into that, uh, I'll hand over to Jacqueline who has one more poll for you. Yes, indeed. Thank you, Simon. So would like to know if you take 30 uh, seconds, uh, which elements or processes in-house that you'd love to automate? Um, so you have two questions with multiple choice. Just take a few seconds to let us know. Thank you. All right, thank you for answering these questions. I guess, Simon, you can carry on from here. All right, thank you. So as I mentioned, we'll jump uh, into a quick overview of PayGops API first. So again, API stands for Application Programming Interface. And basically, it means that pretty much every functionality of PayGops can be accessed programmatically. So we can write code that accesses all the functionalities of PayGops and therefore automate any actions and use the output of each of the commands for as an input for the next one, for example. So we can trigger that remotely without having to uh, use the application's interface, mobile app or web app, but everything we do will be reflected as well in the mobile application or in the web application. Um, in addition to this, we also can get automatic notifications when something is created. So as an example, we have on this slide here, uh, if a new lead is created in PayGops by an agent on his mobile application, we can get a notification that can trigger a solution or like an automation that we do with this. Uh, and then most web-oriented third-party platforms offer similar, similar interfaces. So the most common might be, I don't know, like Google's, uh, uh, environment. So you have an API to connect with Google Mail, with Google Sheets, with anything else. And most of the other tools you may be using in your own processes should also be uh, offering like APIs so that it can be integrated. Um, so as an example, we can connect some of these boxes here to build like uh, an example scenario. So we would have, for example, uh, timer or scheduling, so deciding when this scenario should be running. And whenever a lead is added in PayGops, we could get more details about this lead data, register a new contract for this lead automatically. And as soon as this new contract is registered, this could trigger something else. Okay, so we could easily cascade down into automating anything you may otherwise have to do manually in PayGops, or for that matter, in third party tools. But for now, I stick to automation of PayGops functionalities themselves. Okay, so for the sake of this demo, I will use a third party tool um, called Make, which offers uh, a nice visualization of search automation. So for example, this solution would look like this in Make. So this is a scenario which again, where each of these uh, modules here does represent an API call. So we get here an automatic trigger as soon as a lead is created in PayGaps. We query PayGaps to get more details about this specific lead. We register the new contract. And from there, we can trigger a new automation, which could, for example, as I mentioned, send me automatically an email or send you an email, add a row in the spreadsheet. And like basically, the possibilities are more or less endless. Uh, so there's really, really a lot we can do. Um, where usually the bottleneck becomes more the logic, like what do we actually want to implement and how do we want to implement it more than uh, the actual technicalities of how to implement it. Okay, so that's like a simple example that basically represents 
these same uh, red arrows as we have here, using for now mostly BigOps own API. Um, so again, uh, what this can add as a value for your organization is usually to avoid repetitive tasks and human errors by just connecting and doing it automatically and therefore also prioritizing value adding activities for your staff instead of doing this repetitive thing and uh, increase the reliability, predictability and trustability of what is actually being done in your tools. And all this reduces the risk of mistakes and all this together obviously optimizes your costs. And as I mentioned before, one method of work is not to be neglected because it can be uh, a pretty relevant amount of money over a year, let alone over five years, let alone if you have like 10 activities that require one minute per client, it can very quickly add up. Okay, so in the following slides, I have a few uh, what we call before common process automations, which are basically about automating small uh, processes using only PayGuts API, so without using any third party tool for now, uh, which are relatively simple to implement after having figured out exactly what you need, how your process actually work, and what is it exactly that we need to automate for it to make sense for you. So the first example we put there is like sales commission, where we could uh, in a pretty straightforward way, automatically calculate a commission according to the contract value that a new uh, contract registered would have and right away send an SMS to the agent who registered this contract to tell them, I don't, uh, congratulations, uh, you just registered a client and uh, with this much contract value, you get that much commission and so on. Which again, might be relatively simple to do one by one, but at scale, it can quickly add up. Uh, the, the example we have below is customer referral. So as soon as a new lead is created, well, you could have your agents capture referrals. So existing clients could refer to a new person they know, they trust. And when you create a lead for this new person, you capture the client ID, for example, or like you refer to the existing client. And again, such automation could easily get, uh, well, calculate and, and get and give free activation days for your client, for the referrer, or maybe a message or whatever. Um, but so again, to um, largely simplify and speed up something that could also do uh, be done manually, but one by one. And in the end, this could also increase your sustainability as, as a business by simplifying the way to get new clients. Other couple of examples I have here. Um, so phone number validation, meaning so, so that's actually a case we, we met um, quite often where it turns out that sometimes, well, that if, if you change the phone number of a client, uh, it happens that the phone number is not valid. Maybe because of a typo, maybe because the client made a mistake, whatever the reason, this can lead to pretty time consuming activities like trying to track down the client, uh, trying to find the phone number for to remind them for prompt for, for payments or, or anything else. Um, like a quick cost estimation, um, like I, I've, I've made a, bad guess, a best guess and say, for example, if you have a client with a phone number that you don't, that's not valid, you might need maybe it cause like 15 minutes disturbance in the shop when the client actually shows up. Uh, then maybe all together might be like several minutes up to an hour of the call center trying to reach this client, doesn't work. And then eventually you might have to send an agent to the field to actually meet this client in person, get the new phone number and start all that again. So this uh, like 15 minutes plus one hour plus 30 minutes, according to who would be doing, could cost like, I don't know, three to $4 per client according to our uh, hypothetical company assumptions in the beginning which so three to four dollars per client could sum up to four thousand to five thousand dollars for the whole year if it happens to ten percent of your clients because remember like the estimation was uh one thousand new clients per week so if we multiply this by fifty thousand uh, fifty two weeks during the, the year and take ten percent of, of this could easily reach uh, four thousand to five thousand dollars 
which we could automate like this by just uh, verifying the phone number. So sending a unique code to the phone number that was just entered, entering this code into a custom form on the client page in PegOps, and PegOps and the custom workflow would automatically validate this phone number. Say, okay, the code that was entered matches with the one we just sent, therefore this phone number works. Okay, so this is a relatively simple uh, automation that can save quite a lot of money and reduce a lot of risks and a lot of uh, operational activity. And therefore allowing you to focus on more value adding processes for your staff. Um, another example I have below here is penalties. So typically if a client reaches the end of their contract, like the maturity, but has not finished repaying on time, uh, we could uh, relatively easily add a penalty of, for example, I don't know, 3%, 5%, 10% of the outstanding balance, but in an automatic way, and also send an SMS maybe to the client to inform them, which will then uh, well make a good incentive for the client to actually repay on time, and also um, what well, monitor and warn the clients that uh, they they need to to pay uh, what well, they need to 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 be more conscious maybe of of their repayment schedule. So similarly, I've tried to do like some high level estimation. So if this takes like say three minutes per contract to just do this follow up, which is probably underestimated, and if you have I don't know fifteen percent of your clients actually reaching maturity without having fully repaid per year. That would be around 1,800 clients per year. Uh, so that's $270 on the whole year, which does not sound much, but maybe my 15% estimation is too low. Maybe it would actually take more time and then over five years, what you multiply this. So it can become also significant, especially with regards to how long it might take us to actually implement something like this. And finally, the last example I have for common process automation is um, an integration, for example, with a call center uh, software, where many clients want to uh, the call center to have like a welcome call for their clients as soon as a new contract is registered. So this is this can be done manually, say by a call center manager who takes his list every day and maybe it takes like 30 minutes to compile this list every day and dispatch it to the call center agents, which could cost three, one, 400, $300, 400 per year. And it's a relatively simple automation where every new contract registered could just create a new task directly in the call center software. So cutting down with a lot of the uh, overhead of just transferring information from one tool to the other. Okay. So these were uh, five examples of relatively simple common process automations, which I consider to be low hanging fruits with a high value. If you compare this with what well, the overall, overall cost of your staff doing these actions manually and the added risks. Obviously these are all estimates uh, that might, uh, well, that will have to be adjusted according to your own um, your own needs and your own processes. Okay. So next, as I mentioned in the introduction, I'm going to go a little bit more in detail through one example, which is credit scoring, which is quite a big topic uh, for many last mile distributors. Uh, so I need to introduce a little bit the context and the issue around that, right? So basically, um, you want to reduce your operational costs and increase your economic sustainability. So basically you need to reduce the risk of default of your clients. Meaning you need to make sure that your clients actually purchase the correct product that they can afford. And therefore that they can also get additional loans afterwards once they've successfully repaid that contract. So this is basically what credit scoring means. So we want to compare uh, the loan value with the client's means, like with what can the client actually afford based on a variety of factors. So I have, as example here, uh, affordability and risk for the distributor, which I mentioned in terms of default repossession, inventory costs, and access to future loans. Um, so if we want to find the optimal match, 
uh, credit scoring is a complicated science <laughs> and it obviously also has to be adjusted to every distributors or every business model. But uh, I'm going to go through a simple example to just show what customer flows can do for credit scoring. But before that, I think Jacqueline has uh, another poll, uh, mostly about credit scoring. Yes, here I come again with another poll. Um, so as concerns credit scoring, would like to know if your organization, you know, has already put in place or do you put in place any kind of a credit scoring or client assessment process? Let us know. All right, thanks for answering. We can move on now. Thank you, Jacqueline. Okay, so now that we understood the context and issue and why credit scoring makes sense for most distributors. Um, so like a quick description of what credit scoring actually does. Uh, like that's one simplified approach of credit scoring. As I mentioned, it can be pretty complicated, but so as an introduction, like a relatively simple approach would be to retrieve historical data from past clients. So you look at your existing portfolio and how your clients have repaid so far. And you try to correlate this with socioeconomic data points. So that could be how like the revenue. So comparing the value of the contract of these clients with, for example, the revenue or, uh, like the house, like what material is their house made of? How big is their family? What kind of fields, uh, what kind of crops do they have in their fields? Um, how big is the field? And so on. So what we call socioeconomic data points so that are not uh, stri strictly financial uh, because financial data point is usually hard to get for uh, these, for the population we're working with. And so once we have kind of a correlation between the repayment performance and the socioeconomic data points, then we can capture the same data point for new clients, new prospects, which we can do directly in pegups. So I'll show you an example about this. So we would have exactly the same socioeconomic data points for the new leads in pegups. And then we build a predictive model. So leveraging the correlation we had on top to kind of predict uh, the statistical expected repayment risk of these new prospects. Okay, I'm going to insist a bit on the word in here because predicting is a tricky word. So this is obviously not to be considered as a yes or no automatic decision, but it can give a suggestion of what is statistically affordable for the client or not, right? Then it always needs to, uh, to be manually reviewed behind because we cannot put everything in a box. But so that's, again, I'm going for, through a simplified approach here. So what my custom workflow looks like uh, is basically this. So as we had before, so we have like a few modules in a simplified scenario here. So as soon as a lead is edited on pickups, we could get more details about this lead and get the form answers uh, for this Lead. So this is a screenshot of the mobile application uh, in which we can capture these socioeconomic data points, which I'm going to uh, show you as well in demo. Um, then according to these answers, we can push these answers into a credit scoring model. So for the sake of this demo, I've built a very, very simple, simplistic even credit scoring model in a spreadsheet, which is uh, represented here. So the workflow would then push the form answers into the spreadsheet and the spreadsheet would automatically calculate the credit score and like conclude whether or not uh, the contract value is acceptable for this client. From which uh, the conclusion would be automatically captured in the lead status in the mobile app. So typically this kind of field uh, in the mobile application. Plus then we have logging as well, so we can know what happened. Okay, so basically we have the lead data we kept, like that your agents capture in the in pegups, 
we send this into the grayscale model. Grayscale model returns a response, which we capture again in the application so that field agents and also office agents can know what was the response of this grade scoring. Okay, so same as before, um, I've made a quick or well, a simple scenario in Make for this demo. This is what it looks like. So <clears throat> a lead is edited in backups. If the grade scoring form was answered, we get more details. We get the future contract value and the form, the social economical data points, and we push this to Google Sheets, get the response, and edit the lead status in pickups. Okay, so that's very much following uh, these schematics I had here. So uh, I have here a Pegox mobile application, which I have in my hand. So I'm just going to show you. So I can go to the leads and uh, ba, ba, ba. and I'm going to take uh, this lead here, which I've created for this demo. So this lead has uh, a paygo offer with a total loan value of $2,000. Again, with a uh, yeah, high assumptions and uh, money units are not to be trusted and so on. It's, it's just a demo. So total loan value of $2,200. So, and now this lead is just interested, right? So what we want to do now with this lead is to actually do what, do the credit scoring check. So I've set up a form for the leads in pickups, a credit scoring form. And I've captured three questions. So typically, uh, how much does the lead earn per month on average? What the material is the lead house made of? And whether or not the lead owns a TV? The background for these questions is that, as I mentioned before, we have historical repayment data, deep fake. But we have historical repayment data that kind of try to correlate the house material and the TV ownership and the income with repayment risk, which in some cases might be relatively simple, but in most cases, it's actually pretty complicated relationships. So again, this model is highly simplified. Anyway, I will just answer these questions here for this lead. Uh, and I say, okay, this is a pretty rich uh, person. So I'm putting like a 1,000 uh, $1, per month with a concrete house. And yes, this lead owns a TV. Okay. so. Pretty, so probably this week can afford pretty much everything. So I'm going to save this, which is then uh, automatically synchronizing with pickups, and which will also automatically be processed by our custom workflow here. Um, so it should have processed this already. OK. Here we are. So now finally, um, so it took a little bit of time to synchronize, which is also a real uh, field experience. Uh, the connectivity of the mobile application is not always ideal. So it might take a few seconds until this is actually processing because it's uh, the mobile app connecting with backup server and backup server connecting with, uh, with the custom workflow and then with the Google Sheets and so on. So anyway, uh, this scenario has now processed my create scoring forms here and has automatically updated the lead status. So here we can see the contract value is accepted for this lead because according to our social economical data points, this lead can actually afford our offer. OK, I'm going to take another example with a lead that cannot afford it. Um, so we should take Daniel Thomas who is on well, the same offer. I've selected him. And I'm going to answer this credit scoring form. So this lead, I will just take absolutely much lower uh, values so that we are sure that this lead does not get approved. So I'm going to give it a mud house and no TV ownership and only $100 per month. OK, and if I save this, let me just make sure that this is actually being processed. It should run automatically, but and I'm going to save this lead, which synchronized with backup server. In this case, it was much faster. So this was processed already. And now I can go back and 
updates made it here check that this is the proper lead. Yes. Okay, so, sorry, I've just updated the screen. So, okay, so now we finally got the answer on the mobile app. Uh, sorry, this lease contract is too expensive. <clears throat> uh, please reduce the contract value to be maximum $100. So $100 here is what my simplistic race scoring model considered as the maximum contract value that this leaf can actually afford according to its revenue, uh, the house material and um, the TV ownership. Okay, I'm not going to go through uh, the credit scoring model that I actually used. I have a simple example here, uh, which is actually the one I'm using here. So we can look at it later if you want, but for now, I think um, that's all I wanted to show you. So the main point being that this credit scoring will actually depend on your own business model, on your business, on your typical clients, and uh, the socioeconomic data points and the repayment history is your own uh, business knowledge, right? So you may as well have already your own credit scoring model, or at least repayment history statistics in your own, uh, in your own company knowledge. And typically, such credit scoring solutions are about plugging, like connecting pay gaps with your solution. So in some cases, we could try to come up together with a credit scoring model that actually makes sense for you. But it's usually better if you figure out your credit scoring model beforehand, because it needs, I mean, it takes a, a lot of knowledge and a lot of experiments as well to, to find out what makes sense for you. Uh, in which case it's fairly easy for us then to connect peg ups with your model and leverage your model to automate uh, the, loan, the loan approval processes in the field. Okay. Um, yeah. And what else do I have about this? So yeah, so it is, so you have, you can have your own in-house experience uh, in-house parameters that make sense for your own clients. So if it's more farmers, then maybe the crop size, uh, the type of crop you have in there, whether or not you have animals, the family size or whatever, which might not be relevant for other distributors, for other businesses or for other countries even. Um, so yeah, the, the model itself is a bit uh, complicated to put together, but we can pretty much simplify the connection between take ups and your credit scoring models. Um, again, this as the other examples is a paid service. So we have like a high level estimation of how much work this might require, which will obviously have to be assessed based on your specific needs, what you have, what you don't have, what we need to figure out together and so on. So this is more to give an idea of how, how much uh, this could cost uh, for you to ask us to implement these kind of solutions. Okay, so that was it for the credit scoring. I hope it was clear, otherwise uh, I can take questions later. Um, now I have like two more uh, high level examples. So one is about inventory integration. So that's something we've implemented with uh, a software called Unleashed which uh, can do, uh, well, can manage the stocks. So can create purchase orders to get more stock from a, from a distributor, from a seller, uh, manage the sales orders of your leads in peg ups and the stock movements. So the typical automation here is just making sure that every new contract registered in peg ups with a product means that the product is actually going to the field. So leaving the warehouse, going to the field. So this is what this connection here is about. And similarly, if there's any after sales issues, repossession, so products coming back from the field into the warehouse, maybe a replacement product going back to the field. So this is also synchronized in the inventory management platform. So again, depending on your own processes, this might take quite a lot of different scenarios of what exactly needs to be synchronized and how and when, so that it makes sense for, for your uh, staff and for your processes. 
but we've done a, so we've implemented something that is for one of our clients uh, a few years back, and we've done quite an interesting case study comparing uh, their operational costs before, their operational costs after the integration, and counting also the cost of the integration and all that. <clears throat> and so this is what we consider the integration helps them with. So reducing the risk of inventory mismatches, reducing the needs for stock counts, uh, the stock movements, which were quite a big task they had to do every week or every month to correct uh, stock discrepancies, which leads to an estimated saving of minimum 78,000 USD per year. Um, that's also because of the price of the items they actually have in stock and how much it costs for one item to be lost. Right. So as soon as you have inventory discrepancies, it can have pretty, pretty dire consequences for your business. So I invite you to uh, to go to that web page um, and uh, check out the case study we've done about this, which gives a little bit uh, deeper breakdown about how we come to 78,000. Um, and I think it's it's pretty interesting. And then the last example I have is account is integration with accounting. Um, which is also something that relatively often pops up. So uh, here's an example with QuickBooks, which many last mile distributors use, at least for man managing um, the staff wages, uh, the, um, the overall expenses of the company, uh, the, uh, the capital of the company. And then you also want to keep track of the receivables from all the loan contracts, the loan contracts you have in the field. And you want every loan repayment to also be reflected in that, which will reduce the receivables, increase um, how much money you actually have, and also capture debt. So whenever you have clients defaulting in the field, that's basically money you will not get back, and that needs to be taken into account in your overall accounting. So I don't have a case study on this. So the estimation of the value is, well, a little bit more complicated to estimate but we are in the same range like because we are automating repetitive processes and we are also reducing massively some of the financial risks on your company. Um, again, this will also be a pretty consequent project, uh, which depends, like the actual integration depends on your existing processes for uh, accounting management and so on. So it can be, uh, it can be pretty complicated. Uh, but I think it's it's worth the value. That's pretty much what I had in terms of examples of custom workflows. Um, before we go to the q and I think Jackie has one last poll for you. Yes, indeed, I do. Um, so before we move on to the Q&A session, we, I'm sure on your mind, you're wondering, how can I gain in operational efficiency with these solutions? So, for us to know where we can meet you, can you share with us where in your operations you'd require some kind of optimization, optimizations? Um, so whether it's like during your agent management processes or delivery management or your KYC processes, uh, for example, on credit scoring like Simon has shared throughout the presentation, just um, select any of the multiple choice uh, answers that matches your needs at this time. All right, thanks for answering the last poll um, and thanks for your attention so far. So I think we have a couple of questions and we can address them one by one. Just Okay, so to start with, we've got a question from Isaac on how many apps and sites we're using um to come up with the credit scoring scenarios i suppose yeah okay um 
so if I go back to this slide with the actual uh, process, this one. Um, so in this example, we need only two. Well, we need pickups and we need the software that's hosting the create scoring model <clears throat> as a minimum. Because uh, pickups itself does not do it. And in my example, it's a, so I build this create, model, create scoring model in a spreadsheet. So that's the only thing that I'm calling. So I'm sending data to that create scoring model and I'm receiving data from that create scoring model. And that's all. Then, as I mentioned, what's tricky in there, like what's much more complicated is actually building this create scoring model for which you might need, I don't know, a variety of other tools, right? In this simple case, um, I was able to do it fully in the spreadsheet by just aggregating in my spreadsheet the history of contract repayment, the social economical uh, parameters of these clients according to their uh, repayment um, performance, and building the crazy scoring model directly, the predictive model directly in the spreadsheet. But you might, uh, like, you might need to do more extensive data analysis. You might need to, to uh, use machine learning to come up with more complicated algorithms. You might need to, um, or you might use a, the, well, more complicated or like different third party models. So everything is possible. Uh, I guess that, yeah, my own approach would be the simplest way would be such a spreadsheet, which I consider quite a, as, a, as a low hanging fruit start if you don't have anything yet. Uh, but then obviously it can get much, much more complicated than that. All right, thanks, Simon. Um, so our next question, well, bearing in mind that we have just a couple of minutes more before the end, is uh, do you also work with customers to identify which processes make sense for them to automate as part of the client onboarding, or do you take requests they come up with? Um, and then afterwards is after the implementation of a workflow automation. Okay, let's take it one by one. I guess let's answer the first one, which is, do we uh, help customers to come up with the processes that make sense for them to automate during the client onboarding, or do we take the request they come up with? Yes, so very much. Um, so we have a customer success team uh, that Jacqueline is part of. Yes. Uh, I am part of as well. Um, so we we are in, in close discussion with all our customers. So whenever customers suggest a need, um, yeah, so typically our customer success team would identify whether this could make sense as a custom workflow and possibly involve uh, involve my team also to evaluate. Does this make sense? Is it actually feasible? Yeah. How can we best advise the client? Um, so and then the second. Yeah, so anyway, so to add to what Simon said is uh, we're in contact with the customer from the very first stage of onboarding and throughout the customer journey. So obviously they're like ongoing conversations where we're able to spot where they might, you know, necessarily require like a, a custom workflow um, solution to help them, you know, better manage your operations, then we can make suggestions. But uh, for the most part, we have these requests coming from the customer. Uh, so I guess your second part, Magdalena, was after the implementation of a workflow optimization, does PayGops manage the maintenance of it? And do we absorb the cost of troubleshooting or is it handed over to the client? Yeah, that's always a big topic um, because yeah, every solution, so thanks for this question. Every solution that involves a custom workflow involves like moving parts, uh, is uh, subject to troubleshooting because there's many, many things that can uh, be relatively reliable in such a solution and it needs to be monitored and troubleshot properly. So this is something that we um, also keep. So that's something we do. So when we offer a custom workflow solution, it includes the design, uh, well, aligning together with the, with the customer on what exactly do they need, how do we want to implement it? A review that our ID matches with the expectation, um, follows the expected user journey. And then we also estimate um, 
like yeah the, the cost on the long run and uh, the cost of troubleshooting and uh, and so and then it's our own responsibility to make sure that it's working on the long run in some cases um, some clients have wished to take over some parts of it uh, but in general we are we are just sending that ourselves and then again this is also uh, considered as the uh, the overall price of the consulting service that we offer to the, to the client. Thanks, Simon, Magdalena. I hope that answers your query. Um, if you have more, I uh, would we'll drop a contact and you can tell us more in detail what you're looking at. So I guess we have one last question, if I'm looking correctly, from Jackson. And he'd like to know what kind of scenario do you recommend integrating PayGops with AppSheet? With AppSheet, um, it's been a while since I've used AppSheet, uh, and I think it has an API in its own. So, what I've seen people using it is having additional forms for their end users. That would be uh, so. Like the main purpose of AppSheet is actually putting quickly together a user interface that you can then use uh well query the results of like maybe put the results directly in a spreadsheet so this can be used like this has been used in the past for uh clients requiring a user interface for their staff that is not covered in pegups that what well, pegups functionality would not be ideal for and which could then be used so say there could be an app sheet solution for the staff to capture stuff in a, in this app, which would fit into some kind of data storage of the data, typically a spreadsheet. And then we could have an automation in PayGups using the content of this spreadsheet. So to automatically uh, adjust things. So yeah, I don't really have a good example off the top of my head, uh, but it could be, I don't know, a form that uh, your employees are filling out using AppSheet in the shop. And then we want in parallel to update some of the data in pickups according to the, the, the answers uh, of this form. That's yeah, I guess one. once you have a more specific like scope, then you can advise better. Um, so we have a very last query coming in from Jackson again, and it says, what features can we expect when integrating with online call center companies, such as Dial Africa, et cetera? Um, so online call center companies, I don't know, because I don't know what such companies do. Uh, so my example before was call center software that your staff in your own company might be using. So examples I had about this, like the most known one, or like the ones we've used most is uh, called 3CX, which is a software that your call center might be running on their computers to call clients and to receive, client, to receive calls from the clients. And the typical relatively simple integration we have with uh, such software is, as I mentioned, so a new contract, create a task for a, uh, a welcome call. Or uh, like the second simple integration we, we have already implemented for, for a couple of clients is um, as soon as the software receives a call from a client in the field, we have the integration querying pay gaps, finding the name of the client and maybe the contract reference of the client according to the phone number that's calling and displaying directly the client name and a link to uh, PayGups contract detail for the call center agent uh, in a pop-up. So in the end, as soon as the client calls, uh, the, soft the call center software would display a pop-up on which the call center agent can click and open directly the related page in PayGups so that all the details about that client and the contract progression and the next payment due date and so on, and possibly after sales maintenance also tasks are uh, displayed directly for the relevant call. Great. Uh, thank you for the insight, Simon. I think that's our last question of the day. So at this point, I'd say thank you all for participating in the webinar. Um, so we'll put up the 
contact email address. There it is. There you go. So you have an email address, enquiries at paygops.com, where you can, um, you know, like email us if you have any further queries on uh, what we've shared today. But uh, if you're already a client, what would be good is also to reach out to your Paygops account manager, and then you can share in detail what your needs are, what you're looking to automate, where, if you have any, any concerns about what we've shared today. Um, so on this note, I'd say thank you once more. We'll share a recorded version of this for those who are asking um, at the end. Um, well, at some point this week or next week, I suppose. So that will be it for today. Thanks, Simon, for um, helping out with this. Thanks, Yaminet, for the technical hosting. And thanks, all attendees. And we'll hope to catch you next time. Bye-bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.